let's talk about aux tracks. Okay, so in Reaper, aux tracks work a little bit differently than usual. Instead of a specific type of track that we make called an aux track, we can basically turn any track into an aux track. So let's get into it. So here I am in Reaper and I have my mixer open at the bottom here and last video we set up an action for this but just to remind you I'm just going to type in mixer in my action view and I'm going to click toggle mixer visible and my default shortcut for that is X and again as a reminder if you don't know how to get to the actions menu that I just brought up which my shortcut for that is question mark you can go to actions at the top and go to show action list. So I have my mixer at the bottom just so you can see all the tracks and you can see the various ways that we can use to make aux tracks. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make two tracks. So we have two tracks here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we have our two different tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this one explosion, let's say. And let's say I want this purple one right here to be a reverb. So I want to send from this green track to this aux track or what will be an aux track that will have a reverb plugin on it. So I'll name this one verb. So we have an explosion and we have a reverb. So first thing I'm going to do is throw on a sound effect for this explosion track. So we have something to work with. So I'm just going to find an explosion track in my library. Cool. Let's use this one. It's nice and generic. Perfect for our purposes here. So I'm going to drag this in. We have a little explosion track. Great. Fantastic. And now what I want to do is send from this green track to this purple track. But before we do that, I'm going to actually insert a reverb plugin onto this verb track that's going to be our aux track. So let's take care of that right now. So I'm going to click this verb track here at the bottom in the mixer. And over here at the top, you'll see a kind of section of rows. And that's where we insert our plugins. So I'm going to click the very top one, but it doesn't really matter which one you click right now, at least. I'm going to click this very top one. And I like FabFilter's Pro R Reverb. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really, really like it. So I'm going to insert a FabFilter Pro R onto this reverb track. So now we have our explosion track, we have a verb track, and we have a reverb on that verb track. And I'm just going to leave these settings by default because we're not here to make specific sounds, just learn how this works. So to make a aux track out of this verb track, there's a few different ways we can go about it. The first way, which is pretty straightforward, is I'm going to go down here into the mixer section right here. Now, the first thing that we can do is notice that there are these little boxes right down here. And you'll see that there's one and there's two with a green slash through it and two other very faint slashes. Now, these slashes denote where these tracks are actually headed. We're going to get into that in just a second, but don't worry that, about that too much for now. But basically, if I want to send a signal from this explosion track into this verb track, I'm going to need to click this little box here with that slash and I'm going to go through a few different ways to send so don't worry if this isn't the way you're used to doing it we're going to start with this one so I'm going to click this little box at the bottom and I'll bring up a routing window like this now we're going to go more in depth into this later on but for the purpose of this video when it comes to just making a simple send it's pretty straightforward so we have our window here and there's a section called add new send. So if I click that, you'll see it'll give us an option of all the other tracks that we have in the project. In this case, we only have one other track, which is the second track, which is why there's a two in front, and it's called verb. So if I click that, a send now gets created, and we can choose how much of our signal we are sending to that reverb channel that we have. And we can also change the pan of that send as well. We can do that all within here and we can do that also within the mixer which we'll cover in just a second. So one thing I want to point out is that now if you look at this explosion track you'll see it has that green slash that light green slash that we had earlier and there's also an orange 
slash now in that box that we clicked earlier. So the green slash means that it's sending from this first track all the way out to the master track. And this yellowish, orangish, sla orangish slash means that it's sending to some other track within the project. So now we know we're sending to the master and we're sending to some track elsewhere in the project. And if we looked at our reverb track, we have the green slash, meaning it's going out to the master, which is pretty typical. And we have a blue slash, which denotes that we are receiving from some other track. So it's just a quick little visual indicator for you. So I'm going to hit play, and you're going to hear that this explosion sound also will get some reverb thanks to this reverb aux track that we have set up. So, some extra reverb for us. Fantastic. Great. Very easy to use. Very straightforward once it all clicks. And if you want to change the amount of signal you're sending to this track, all you need to do is click and drag that little wheel that's just to the right-hand side of where it says the name of the send. So, I can just click and drag right there, and I'll change the amount of signal I'm sending to that reverb. Very, very easy. Now, that's one way of setting up a send. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click where it says verb right here, and I'm going to click remove send. But there are plenty of other ways to do it. In fact, one of my favorite, which is really easy to do, is see these little boxes that we interacted with earlier in the mixer view. I can click and drag from one box onto another track, and you can see that the icon of my cursor turns into a little patch cable. So if I can just click and drag from this box over another track, it automatically creates a send to that track. Super, super quick, super, super easy. I love doing it that way. That's much, much faster for me. Now, yet another way you can set up sends is in this tracks view up here that we have, I can right click anywhere on this volume fader. And when I right click on this volume fader, it'll bring up a routing window. So I can automatically click add new send, go to verb, and just like that, we have everything all set up. Now, one thing I want to mention is you'll notice when I open and close the mixer, in my case, you'll notice that I get a few new options, in this case, the routing button that we see in the mixer down below, showing up and disappearing depending on if the mixer is visible or not. So, for example, if this mixer is closed and I just have my Media Explorer open or just nothing open, just these tracks visible, you can see that I have this routing view right here. So I can click and drag from this routing box here onto another track, just like we did with the mixer earlier. But if the mixer is open, that option disappears. In fact, we can only do that drag and drop from down here. And that may apply to you or it may not depending on how your Reaper is set up. But one thing I want to point out is why that's even happening. And we're going to get more into this later, but this is due to our theme settings. And Reaper has the ability to basically change some of its functionality and a lot of its visual look based off of themes. So I'm going to go to Options, Themes, and theme adjuster slash color controls. Now you'll notice in this view, you'll have a few choices at the top to kind of change around different colors and the behaviors of different panels and all that sort of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click over to the right until we get to the track control panel here. And for me, you'll see if mixer is visible, hide routing is set up right here. So we have a rule that basically says if the mixer is visible, hide these buttons that let me route. So I'm going to turn that off. So now, whether the mixer is visible or not, I have the choice to still click these little routing buttons. I still have other things coming and going, which is fine. That's how I like it to behave. But I want these routing things to actually stay there and always be available, whether the mixer is open or not. So before we wrap up, there's one last thing we need to do. And you know what it is. It's tea time with Thane. Last thing we're going to do is talk about pre and post fader send. So I'm going to click and drag just like we discussed earlier over from this explosion track to this verb track. We have our kind of routing panel set up here. It's all good. And we'll, you'll see that we have an option here called post fader, post pan, 
pre-fader, post-effects, and pre-effects. So these basically allow you to tell Reaper when in the signal chain you are going to send your signal over to, in this case, this reverb track. So I'm going to keep it at its default, which is post fader, and that's the most common that you'll see. So basically what that means is that this, depending on how loud our track is, also determines how much of our signal is going to go to our reverb. So at default, it sounds like this. But if I make this track quieter, you'll notice our reverb is also much quieter. So the reverb barely made a tick at all because the explosion wasn't very loud at all either. So if I go back into our routing view and I click where it says post fader and go to pre fader, that means no matter what the volume is set to on my send track or my track that is sending, that reverb is still going to be the same volume. So even when this explosion volume is very, very light, we still hear plenty of the reverb. In fact, this doesn't affect anything with the reverb's volume, only the send will. Now, lastly, we have an option that says pre-FX. So basically that means if I have a bunch of effects on this track, and I'm gonna insert a few right now. So what I inserted was a distortion and a pitch shifter. And these are from the company Kilohertz or Kilohertz. I'm not 100% sure how you say it, but they make great plugins. So I'm just putting in one of their distortions and one of their pitch shifters onto this track. But basically what's happening when our send is set to pre-effects, basically we are giving this reverb channel a version of our signal that doesn't have distortion or pitch shifting on it. So it's sending pre these effects that we have already set up. So let me give you an example. So I'm going to turn this explosion down and we're hearing just the reverb in and of itself because pre effects is also pre fader, just like we talked about with that second option. And what I'm going to do now that we have this distortion and pitch shifter on here, I'm actually going to turn this down because it'll be a little bit loud no matter what, is I'm gonna let you listen to just our explosion with these effects on it. So it's distorted and pitch shifted down. I'll actually make the pitch shifting more obvious. Great, so it's low pitch and distorted, actually sounds kinda cool. But the reverb won't have any of that distortion or pitch shifting put on it. But if I change our send option to post fader, which is the standard one, meaning it'll go through all of these different things. It'll go through the distortion, the pitch shifter, and this fader before sending over to this reverb. We are actually going to get a distorted reverberated signal. So this reverb is actually getting a signal that has distortion and pitch shifting on it. So to make that even more clear, I'm going to switch to our second option, which means post effect. So it's going to go through the effects, but not through this fader before it sends to this reverb channel. So I'm gonna turn this all the way down. So now we're getting a distorted pitch shifted version of that sound through this reverb box channel. And that's how aux channels work in Reaper in a quick nutshell. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching as always. And if you could hit the like button and subscribe and all that good stuff that every YouTuber tells you to do, that would be awesome. And if you're interested in working in the game industry as a full-time pro, as a sound designer, a composer, whatever it may be, and whatever level you may be at, whether it be beginner all the way to super advanced, sign up for my newsletter because that's where you get two free courses that teach you how to get a bunch of game audio gigs, whether you're a freelancer or you want to work at a AAA company, get the latest cutting edge advice on how to break into the industry and get paid for your work, and also learn how to charge for your work and negotiate and all those business skills that not enough people are frankly teaching. So sign up for that newsletter and you'll gain access to all of that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.